For a lot of plants, propagating and multiplying them by cuttings is the fastest and easiest way to grow an unlimited supply. It works like a charm for crops like this basil here. And doing it with green onions is even easier. But no question, propagating some plants in this way can prove to be a bit of a challenge. Woody perennials like this rosemary here aren't always so accommodating. Thicker stems and generally more apprehension on the plant's part to send out adventitious roots means that for crops like rosemary, we got a few extra steps to do to get them to root. Hi, I'm Jeff from the Ripe Tomato Farms, and today let's look at what we have to do to be successful to grow unlimited rosemary plants from just the cuttings. First up, whenever we're taking rosemary cuttings for rooting, we got to do it at the right time. Really? You can take them in any season and still have success, but the most likelihood of rooting a rosemary cutting is going to happen in the late winter or early spring. Snipping off a rosemary stem in the middle of winter is going to break any dormancy pattern, and that's good because the shoot is naturally going to try to root itself. And in the spring, this process has already started. By taking the cuttings at these times, you're working with the plant rather than against it. In the summer and fall, it's much harder to stimulate these guys to root as the plants are all about the impending dormancy. So, for the greatest success rate, take your rosemary cuttings in the late winter or early spring. The other factor governing rooting success with rosemary cuttings is the shoot type and age. Sending out adventitious roots from a cutting is a juvenile trait. That is, the younger rosemary shoots are going to be best at it. Older shoots, or ones that are flowering, are notoriously hard to get to root. So try to avoid them. Try to get the youngest green shoots that are at least 4-6 to six inches long for the best results. Okay, to reiterate, try to take your rosemary cuttings in the late winter to early spring and select the green, lush, new, non-flowering shoots for the best success. For a lot of plants, rooting cuttings is simple. Just cut off the required length of stem, place it in moist, fresh soil, and that's it. Now, rosemary can be done this way, but I strongly advise against it. The simple fact is with these guys, not every shoot is going to root, not every shoot is going to make it. And with the size of the pot and the amount of soil that's needed, well, it can be an expensive endeavor if it doesn't work out. Normally, we root our rosemary in water first. That way we know it's going to be successful. The process is super easy. So, let's go collect a few more rosemary shoots on the way inside, and I'll show you how to get started. Like we said, we're after the younger, greener, non-flowering stems. We also want to make sure that the shoots are at least 6 inches long. I've found that anywhere between 6 and 8 inches is perfect. Now. Each shoot is going to become its own brand new rosemary plant. So, calculate how many rosemary plants you want to make and add about 20% more and we're good to go. Now, I've tried placing the stems as is right in the water, but more than half the time if you do it like that, they just rot. The needle-like leaves of the rosemary stems seems to spoil the water pretty quickly and regular water changes doesn't seem to do a thing. So instead, what I do is I take the stem with one hand and with the other hand, remove the bottom half of the leaves, anywhere from two to four inches. It's super easy and you don't need any tools to do it. Just run your thumb and index finger down from the top of the stem to the bottom against the grain of the leaves. They pop off really easy. The goal here is to get the D-leaf part of the stem the same length as the depth of our water. We want that bottom whirl of leaves to just be touching the top of the water level. Now, in years past, I had one more step that I do with these stems before placing them in the water, but I don't do it anymore. I would always scrape and remove some of the outer layers of bark of the exposed stem. The idea was to get some of that inner cambium layer to be actually touching the water. 
It's a common strategy when you're trying to root higher plants, things like trees, pines, firs, whatever. But I've been experimenting with this for the last six years or so, and I can honestly say it doesn't make a difference. Now, it's not going to hurt your success rate to do it, but it's also an unnecessary step. So why bother? Funnily enough, where the roots pop out of in a couple of weeks is going to show us why it doesn't matter. Okay, let's go ahead and get all our stems stripped, place in water, with a depth right up to those bottom leaves, like we mentioned before. A little bit of warmth is going to speed up this process, but room temperatures work just fine. We're in for a minimum of two to three weeks, sometimes longer, and there's not much we can do to change that. The shoots still need light, but a sunny windowsill will work just fine if you don't own a grow light. If you went ahead and removed all the bottom leaves, that water shouldn't really spoil. But if you notice some bubbles or some heavy discoloration, it won't hurt to change it. For me, I like to use rainwater wherever possible. I like to avoid the chlorine and any chemicals. But I've done it with tap water and I've changed that water once a week without any problems. Within about 15 to 20 days, if you've kept your temperatures between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to start to see little white roots. And after doing this a few thousand times over the last 10 years, I've noticed that for the most part, the roots tend to come out of two locations. Either right at the bottom, where we initially cut the stem off in the main plant, or right at the location of that bottom whorl of leaves. For whatever reason, these two spots are where we almost always see the first roots. Although with rosemary, it does take a while to initially get roots, once those first ones appear, they seem to explode with more pretty quickly. After about two weeks since those roots first appeared, they're ready for some soil. Roots that are born in water though, well, they're pretty sensitive. and We gotta be careful. We definitely don't want them to dry out. So before planting, I make sure to pre-soak my soil from below first for about an hour. Rosemary is a large plant, so for these cuttings, I use a minimum of a one gallon pot. I'm going to be doing several hundred of these for sale this summer, and the one gallon size is a perfect match to allow for about six months of growth. Once your soil is soaked up as much water as it can, just make a hole in the center and bury that stem. And just like before with our water levels, you want to pot it right up to that bottom whirl of leaves. In the cases though where you have a bunch of roots coming out of that area, maybe plant them a little bit deeper. It takes about a week to 10 days for those roots to grab hold of the soil and for the plant to get established. So, keep it sheltered with a moderate amount of light and nice even conditions, like a greenhouse or indoors on a windowsill. If you pre-soak the soil prior to planting, you shouldn't have to water for about two weeks. Yes, the stems and the roots need to be kept moist, but they also need oxygen, and waterlogged soil quickly turns anaerobic. So, be careful not to overwater, especially at this point of the process. About two to three weeks after planting, give a tug on the rooted stem to make sure that it's fully planted and established. If so, the plant is on its way, and you've successfully rooted a cutting and grown a brand new rosemary plant. Excellent work. Although it's a relatively simple process to root your own rosemary cuttings, I do realize that there's a few moving parts. So let's recap and highlight the main points to make sure we got it all. Whenever taking new rosemary cuttings, you'll want to do it in the late winter to early spring. Aim for new lush green stems that are about 8 inches long. Remove the bottom half of all those leaves, exposing the bare stems. The length of that strip stem is going to be the depth of your water for rooting. Place them in a jar of clean water and keep them between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. After about two weeks, sometimes a little bit more, new white roots are going to start to appear. Once you've got several of them, we can think about potting. Using a minimum of a one gallon pot, pre-fill them with soil and pre-soak them for about an hour to prepare them for planting. 
bury those stems to the same depth that they were in the water and within two weeks they should be fully rooted as a brand new rosemary plant. No doubt, rosemary is an amazing perennial herb. It may not be as easy to root as basil or even thyme, but propagating from cuttings is far easier, faster, and cheaper than growing new plants from seed. And hopefully today, I've given you all the tools necessary to grow unlimited rosemary in your garden just from the cuttings. Hey, best of luck guys, I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.